timing marks lined up so I can remove the camshaft. And do valve tappets. On overhead valve engines, it don't matter so much getting them mixed up, but I still like to put them back the same. And I'm just going to try to clean out as much as possible. I'm not going to remove the crankshaft or anything. This is as far as I'm going to tear it down. I just wanted to uh, get an idea of what the inside was like on it. Okay, so I got most of it cleaned up here and I'm get ready to take the wool pump out. So we can clean everything here before we put it back together. You, can, you might be able to skip this if you don't want to fool with it. But I just think it's best to. There's supposed to be an O-ring in here. Some of them have a gasket, this is supposed to have an oil, an O-ring. I didn't order a new one, so hopefully we can reuse it. Just an O-ring all it is. And this is your oil pump here. You kind of see how it works. How the oil will be sitting there and it compresses it and pushes it out. And the main reason I'm doing anything with the oil pump is to clean it a little bit and to show you all more about the oil pump. I don't have no videos at all on here about the these engines with oil pumps and I'm just going to gently grab a hold of it like this and uh, pull it out. It's actually a two-piece oil pump and uh, it's pretty neat how these work really. Just kind of goes around like that <laughs> and uh, actually nothing, none of this really looks too dirty but I just, I just feel better to clean it you got this rod right here that uh, drives it. If you note the way it came out, this uh, side here with the groove was the oil pump side. So I'm going to leave all this out because you can put this in and you can feel it line up with the camshaft. It just makes everything makes assembly a lot easier. And I've showed this and or at least talked about it in all my other videos on how to change out your oil seal and. Uh, I'm just using the punch here to catch the lip on it. And that's your oil seal. Okay, so here's a new oil seal. And this is a Model 31 Briggs 31P707, and uh, this is the part number for the oil seal. I had to get a Briggs brand, the only one they had, and uh, it goes in just like this. Now, ordinarily, I would use a socket to drive it, but the biggest socket I got is an inch and a quarter, and you want it to go clear out to the outside edge. So I'm just going to drive this in using this real ring gear. Like I said, this is one of my tools for working on the, the valves and stuff anyway. Okay, so I got it in there. It's just a little bit below the top, and it's about the way the original one was. And you don't want to forget to put some oil or STP all over that seal. If you don't, it'll burn up in no time. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit on that crank bearing so I won't forget it. Like I said, we'll be putting the oil pump back in after this is back on the motor. Okay, you see I got everything cleaned up. and I was just spraying a penetrating oil on the back side and drained it out. And while I got through, I poured motor oil all over everything here. I'm going to put STP up here on the rod like I usually do when I don't Take one completely apart and on the counterweight. Just ensures that nothing is dry when you're starting it. Now I'll get ready to put the camshaft in, put some on the cam bearing, and all over the valve tappets. 
And that does two things on the valve tabs. If you don't put nothing on there, they'll keep falling out. And uh, it keeps it from starting dry. I try to clean everything as best as I could. And on the camshaft, you want to put a little bead of STP or oil all over the lobe, both of the lobes. And I showed in other videos on the older style, this little thing here is your compression release. You get this little bump right here. And it starts spinning faster, it comes out of the way, lets the valve close all the way. So this is ready to go in. see your two timing marks lined up and on this one I always talk about the hole that's in the camshaft well they finally put it over here that way it's actually lined up like that I don't like these hollow camshafts it wouldn't take much to shatter all this if uh, for some reason the, the piston hits a, one of the valves or something and it's locked up it wouldn't take much to shatter everything and your oil slinger governor goes in here make sure your teeth line up make sure that shaft lines up with the governor shaft and you'll know it'll be working properly when you put it back together this is the standard thickness and I'm pretty sure it's the only one available for this engine and now you're ready to install the, the sump and like I said make sure there's oil all over that seal and on this bearing here well, you'll know nothing's starting dry when you first crank it over. And make sure these counterweights are just right, because this type of engine goes together a little bit different than the old type. It's got to be right in line. Gotta make sure everything's just right with it. Put some STP down in here where this oil shaft goes. Like I said, make sure you put it in the right way. The part with the groove, the smaller side faces out. That's what you do. Just spin it until it lines up and it'll slide in like that. Okay, so you want to put some STP around here with the oil pump rods. You could use motor oil, which might be a better choice for this. And you just line it up just like that. And uh, I want to actually, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put some STP in here like this just to, that should help prime it too. I'm going to put oil in the uh, oil filter as well. And you put your plate back on, you get them three screws. And I would recommend changing that O-ring, but we're not in this case. I would have, but I forgot to order it. So if it leaks, we'll put another one in it later on. These are all 5 6 tens, and you don't want to go crazy with it. You want it pretty snug. Now you're ready to put all the crankcase bolts in. As I mentioned earlier, this is a type with a separate washer. This is the type with the integral washer. It's built in on it. And there's a different torque spec for both one of them. This is actually a head bolt, but they look just like this. And the type that we're using, this type is torqued at 140 inch pounds. And this type is torqued at 200 inch pounds. So we'll go ahead and do this off the gonna get all these started and we'll torque it real quick
You just want to do all of them in a crisscross pattern. You don't want to go in the same all the way around. Check your crankshaft in play. It's supposed to be between 10 and 30 thousandths. Okay, again, this is the uh, head gasket for this engine. 796584. This is for model 31, 31P707. Okay, the head bolts are torqued at 220 inch pounds. You want to go in a crisscross pattern. This is where it's more important than anything on here. And there is a preset pattern. I'm just doing my usual way I do it. And you want to go rack around and check them just to make sure you didn't miss one. For that, you can go around and order. You're not actually turning them. Okay, so this plate here, I was talking about where these plastic pieces melt them. This is what I need. And I was trying to put it together without it, but the push rods kept wanting to move. But I found this in another head I had off of a, a 14 horsepower Briggs. And it's actually the same piece. It's going to bolt right in there. I forgot about having it. You want to get this pretty tight. It's what's holding your rocker arm and everything in. Okay, so now we're ready to install the push rods. And it's going to be hard to see. I'll try to show you what i got to do. But if you look straight down through the hole, you can see the top of the valve tappet. You can usually feel around it. You'll feel the valve go in, the push rod go in if you can't see it. It goes straight down into where the valve tap it is. And you're ready to put your rocker arms on. Don't forget these little caps that go on the top of the valve stem here. I got the engine on top dead center with both valves closed. And I'm just going to set the clearance on one valve on camera. And both valves are just the same, but the, the specs are different. On this particular engine, the intake valve is set three to five thousandths, and the exhaust valve is set five to seven. So we'll set them at three and five. I like to set them as tight as possible. You need a T20 Torx bit and a 10 millimeter wrench. It's the best way to do it. So get this started here. And all the wrench is doing is keeping you from spinning it while you torque this down here. Just like that. We should get just a little bit of drag here. So I'm going to do the same thing on this valve off camera. And of course your valve cover just bolts on with your four bolts. And uh, you may have to replace this gasket. If it stayed in place you can usually get by without changing it. I did get a new one but we'll see what it does. Okay so I just put the coil on here. And I have other videos on how to do this. And it just set the gap at between 10 and 14 thousandths. And it runs over hooks to your spark plug. And your shutoff wire hooks on the bottom side. Right there. This is the wiring harness for this engine. This is your recharge system. It goes down to your main motor plug for the particular motor just came off of. This is for the fuel solenoid on the carburetor. That's the ground that hooks to one of the bolts that goes on the shroud, which I'm going to put on next with two little bolts hold it on. Okay, so I put a temporary plastic fins on it for right now. 
and the uh, reason I say temporary this don't have the four bolt holes to mount the factory screen on it so this will work just to get it running but I'll have to wear the right one for it went ahead and bolted the starter up just two bolts and like I say I got the shroud mounted here the ground wire hooked right here ready for the carburetor to go on so I'll go ahead and put the shroud on it and the exhaust and the carburetor will be about ready to start it. Go put the dipstick back on. Alright guys, I know I skipped a few steps on you, but I'm trying to speed the video up and keep from boring you too much because uh, most of the other stuff is about the same as the other engines we usually work on. I showed the carburetor linkages before the video and I got that started that set up and the gap solenoid up there. Put the new oil filter on it, as you see. And uh, I filled it about halfway up with oil. Some of it ran out. And uh, I ain't put the air filter on there yet because I probably have to spray a little carburetor cleaner or pour gas in there to get it started. This engine has a fuel pump on it. So, uh, let me get it mounted and put some oil in it and we'll see what it's going to do. Well guys, it seems to be running pretty good now, and so if you got any questions or comments about this type of engine, feel free to leave me a comment below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can, so thanks for watching, catch you on the next one.